Okay, this screencast is for pages 280 and 281. Those are a couple of pages between uh, lesson one and lesson two. Uh, what this covers is converting from one unit of distance to a different unit of distance, and we'll also talk about um, which units are most appropriate in which situations. Um, so basically, we'll, we'll discuss when to use what units, and we'll also, um, I'll also walk you through how to convert from one unit to another. Okay, so we're going to start on page 280. Uh, it says the closest, second closest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri. Its distance from Earth is about 40 trillion 850 billion kilometers. Astronomers use a unit called a light year to describe very large distances because you can see already that that is such an enormous number that I don't know about y'all, but my mind has a hard time imagining that many kilometers. Okay? A light year is the distance that light can travel through space in one year. Okay? In space, light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. Okay? Um, we actually did this calculation um, on the back of your lesson one notes, and I'm going to walk you back through that just real quickly uh, so that you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the back of your lesson one notes and you're answering the question how far does light travel in one year. Again, this is the speed of light. Light or any other electromagnetic wave, um, gamma rays, radio waves, um, x-rays, visible light, all of that stuff travels a distance of 3,000 300,000 kilometers every second. Well, if it's traveling 300,000 kilometers every second, then how far would it go in a year? Well, in uh, one minute, there's 60 seconds. So you'd take this and you'd multiply it by 60. In an, uh, there's 60 minutes in an hour, so you'd multiply by 60 again. There's 24 hours in a day, so multiply by 24. 365 days in a year, so multiply by 365. When you get all of that, you get 9.46 times 10 to the 12th or this big long number, uh, that many kilometers. And basically what they've done here is they've taken that number and rounded it off a little bit and called it 9.5 trillion kilometers. But again, that number is really, really big. So sometimes it's easier to just talk about really large distances in space as um, in terms of light years. So even though light is, you know, traveling as fast as anything that we know of, zippity zippity fast at 300,000 kilometers a second. Um, this star is still so far away that at the speed of light it's still going to take light 4.3 years to get from that star to us here on Earth. Okay, So it, it's easier to speak about its distance in terms of light years. It gives you a little bit simpler idea. Um, and remember Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us besides our Sun. Um, our closest neighbor basically. So it starts to give you an idea of just how spread out things are in space. Okay? All right. Um, so before I walk you through any problems, we need to discuss what a conversion factor is. Okay? If I wanted to go, for instance, from this many kilometers to light years, I have to convert from kilometers to light years, and there's a process for me to do that. And it begins with something called a conversion factor. Okay? A conversion factor is a fraction in which the numer numerator and denominator represent the same amount or measurement, but are in different units. Okay? And when you can multiply by a conversion factor, it's the same as if you were multiplying by one. Okay? Um, conversion factors are used to introduce the unit you need and cancel out the unit that you don't need. Okay, well before I get into this example down here, which is using big numbers, I'll do a simpler one up here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, okay let's say that I was given three feet and I needed to convert that into inches. Okay. Well, I can use a conversion factor to do that. Hopefully you guys know that in one foot there are 12 inches. So what I can actually do is I can make a fraction. I can say 12 inches over one 
foot. Now, that may not look like a fraction that's equivalent to 1, but if you think about it, 12 inches, you know, the, the length of a ruler, is the exact same as 1 foot. Okay, the numbers are different because the units are different. So 12 inches is the same length as one foot. So even though it's kind of disguised looking, this fraction is equivalent to one. And I can write it this way, or I can write it just the opposite. I can put the one foot on top and the 12 inches on bottom. It doesn't make any difference. The only reason I would pick one over the other is just depending on what I need to do. Okay, so the steps to convert would be this. I'm going to take what I know, I have three feet, and I'm going to just make that look like a fraction by placing it over one. And then I'm going to multiply it by a conversion factor, one of these two things. Okay, and remember, a conversion factor, even though it's disguised, it is a fraction that's equivalent to one. It's just, it's going to allow you to change units. So if I have feet over here, I want feet to cancel out. And the rule is that the, the unit you want to cancel has to be catty corner. Okay, so if feet's on top over here, I want feet on bottom over here. That means I'm going to pick this one. Okay, so I'm going to write it in 12 inches over 1 foot. Okay, and then all you have to do, okay, you cancel feet because you've got one on bottom and one on top. And then you're just going to take what's on top and multiply across. 3 times 12 is 36. And of course you're going to wind up with inches because that's the only unit you have left. And then 1 times 1 is 1. Well, I mean, I could write it as 36 over 1, but I don't really need to do that. Okay, So that's how I've converted. I use a conversion factor, which is a fraction equivalent to 1. It's just the fraction is sort of in disguise. Okay, So take your highlighter, please, and highlight uh, what a conversion factor is because we're about to use another one. And the only difference uh, between what we just did with the feet to inches and the one we're about to do, the one we're about to do may look more intimidating because the numbers are bigger, but it's the exact same idea. Okay, I'm just going to talk you through this one about the Whirlpool Galaxy and then we're going to do one on page 281 together. The Whirlpool Galaxy is located this many kilometers. See, that's such a huge number. I don't even know how to say that number. So it's really hard for me to imagine that many kilometers. It's easier for me to talk about the distance to the Whirlpool Galaxy if I said it in light years. So anyway, I've got to convert. I, I want to convert this many kilometers into light years. Okay. Currently I have kilometers and the, the unit that I want is light years. Okay. And from uh, lesson one, remember, we said that light can travel 9.46 times 10 to the 12th kilometers in a year. They rounded that off to 9.5 trillion. So in one light year, there are 9 trillion 500 billion kilometers. Okay, so this is a fraction that even though it's disguised, it's equivalent to one because one light year is the same distance as 9 trillion 500 billion. Here's one way I can write the conversion factor, and they wrote it that way because that's the way you need it. Um, but the other way is with the 9 trillion 500 billion on top. Make sure I squeeze in enough zeros. Is that enough? Yeah. Um, and the one light year on bottom. Okay? Either one is correct. It just depends on what you need to do. All right, so they, again, they took what they had, this whole big long number, and they placed it over a 1 just to make it look like a fraction. And then they picked which conversion factor they needed. They know they needed this one because they want the kilometers to be catty corner so that they will cancel. Okay, so not only do the kilometers cancel, but a whole lot of zeros cancel as well. Um, and if you notice down here, I can cancel a set of zeros and a set of zeros, a set of zeros, a set of zeros, three more zeros with three more zeros, three, oops, two more zeros. Okay, and when you finally say uh, two, nine, four, five, zero, 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 divided by 95, you're going to get 31 million light years. So when you convert this huge number in kilometers to light years, 
you get 31 million kilometers, which is still really a big number, but it's a whole lot easier to deal with that than it is this huge number, okay? So the Whirlpool Galaxy is 31 million light years from Earth, okay? All right, join me on page 281 for the next screencast.